There are two major influences that affect how individuals perform in their environment. These influences include the type of leadership that exists and also personal motivation. Motivation is the driving force behind all people's behavior. It is a psychological feature that arouses an organism to act towards a desired goal. And because of this, the term motivation has enacted significant research that has developed into theories of why people perform, how they perform, and why some people display different behaviors that put them in leadership roles. A first leadership theory concerning motivation was presented by Frederick Taylor in the 1920s. Taylor's theory, known as the scientific management theory or Taylorism, emphasized that employees were solely motivated by the pay that they received for the work they did. Since Taylor believed this, he promoted the idea of a fair day's pay for a fair day's work. In other words, if Taylor felt a worker did not achieve enough in a day of work, then they would not get paid as much as someone else who did meet Taylor's work standards. This theory could definitely be used by leaders to motivate people because if people learn that they will not get paid as much for slacking off, then they will work even harder to ensure that they get fair pay. While scientific management is not practiced today as widely as it was when it was first introduced, it still provided many significant contributions to the advancement of management practice. This theory provided a better way to study workplace efficiency and develop better training procedures. A second theory was presented by Victor Vroom in 1960s. This theory, known as the expectancy theory, tries to explain why individuals choose one behavior or option over the other. This theory does not try to explain what motivates an individual, but it rather explains how they make the decisions to achieve the end value. A leader can motivate using this theory by using the following factors. A leader needs to be trustworthy so that an individual feels that a promise of good performance will be rewarded. A leader needs to be in control. If an individual feels that a leader cannot control an organization, then they will try and control the situation themselves. And lastly, a leader needs to establish certain policies with reward systems so that an individual can abide by them. A final leadership theory was presented by Abraham Maslow and Frederick Irving Herzberg in the 1940s. Their theory, the theory of human need, stated motivation was based on five essential needs, which they placed in a pyramid called the hierarchy of needs. From bottom to top, the essential needs are as follows. Basic slash physical needs, security needs, social needs, self-esteem, and at the top is self-fulfillment. In order for the top tiers of the pyramid to be achieved, the bottom tiers need to be fulfilled first. Maslow suggests that achieving one tier motivates a person to achieve in the next. A good leader can actually motivate a person to achieve each level of the pyramid. One way a leader can motivate someone through their basic needs is by giving them a paying job that allows them to purchase things needed for survival. Leaders can motivate someone through their so social needs by ensuring that everyone feels that they belong and that they are an important part of the group. Leaders can motivate someone through their security needs by providing someone with a stable and steady job. Leaders can motivate people by using their self-esteem by providing them with positive feedback. And lastly, leaders can motivate people through self-fulfillment by offering promotions, bonuses, and a chance for them to develop and grow. When considering all of these theories, it is important to keep in mind that the key to motivating employees is finding out what an employee is looking for in an employee relationship. I have attached a video from Up that shows the Maslow's hierarchy of needs, so enjoy.